Hey everybody, it's Brad. Uh, today we're doing uh, cutting in artistic software. Um, so what we're gonna do is um, make a couple of cut work designs. Um, so this first video, uh, we're gonna take an existing embroidery design and, and turn it into a cut work design. Um, so let's begin. And open your Creative Drawing 6 program. Make sure you have your dongle plugged in, otherwise it'll say CBU failure. Alright, uh, we're going to do create new. Uh, it doesn't matter at all what fabric you pick for this, uh, so just say cotton or whatever you feel like picking. Click next. We're going to be going from embroidery in this class. So left click on where it says from embroidery and then on the dot 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 next to that, left click on that and navigate to... Um, on your CD, there's going to be a, uh, a design called Picture Frame Uncut. So select Picture Frame Uncut and choose Open. Um, from there, we are going to go and make sure under Hoop, just pick um, Brother 180 by 130 is fine. Um, it really doesn't actually matter what we pick here. Um, so just leave it at whatever the default is, I guess. All right, but 180 by 130 is a 5x7 hoop. Anyway, hit next. And just hit finish. All right, so this is the design. And currently what this is, it's literally just an embroidery design. It would sew this out. It's meant to be like a frame around a monogram or something like that. Um, but what we're going to turn this into is a cutwork design. So the embroidery machine is going to use the cutting needles that came with your software and actually cut this circle out and then uh, embroider this frame around it. Um, so you can do this with uh, any open embroidery design that you have. Um, if it has a hole in it of a certain shape, you can, you can just make it cut it out. So it doesn't have to be perfectly round or perfectly square. You can draw the line in yourself. Um, but for this class, we're going to do uh, essentially the most basic version of this that, that, that there is, where we're just going to just going to use the auto shapes to, to draw a circle uh, or an oval rather inside this. Um, so the first step is to go over to your um, shape tool, which the default is a circle or they call it an ellipse. Um, and so that's actually the default tool and that's the one we're going to use. So we just left click on that. If we wanted a, diff a different shape, we'd hold it, hold our left mouse button down on this little arrow and we can choose from these other shapes here. Uh, I'm going to pick circle and I'm just gonna click and drag and get a circle that is pretty close to the size that's the inner part of this. Um, if your circle's not perfect, you can adjust the shape um, by going up to the select tool, the rectangle selection tool up here uh, on the top left part of your left hand toolbar. Um, we're gonna click on that and this actually gives you these points here and here and here that allow me to kind of stretch the sides so that it all links up. All right. So what you want it to be is right in the middle, essentially, uh, of the satin stitch that's the that forms the the outer oval here. Um, okay. As you can see by default, it draws in a um, a fill for this, which is not what we want. So we need to go into our object properties over on the right hand side here, and we're going to click uh, on the big red X where it says none. If you look here, these two tabs, you've got this paint bucket, that's the filled in part, which in this case is a fill stitch, um, and then the pencil is the outline. Um, so, so right here, this is telling me that my outline is a running stitch, and my fill is a step, which is a standard fill stitch. It just basically fills the area with like a flat row of stitches. Um, but we don't, want, we don't want that at all in this. We want to just hit the big red X, um, and that gets rid of our our fill altogether. There's no fill in this at all now, although it is still tinged blue. There are no stitches there. If I zoom in, there's no stitches. Um, okay, but there still is a running stitch. See this purple running stitch that it showed me? All right, so we've got one running stitch, um, and actually my shape is right. I, I was going to adjust the shape a little bit, but it's actually exactly how I want it. Um, okay, so uh, what we need here, we've got a running stitch, 
which is great, but we also need um, that this running stitch right here is what we're going to turn into the cut, um, where it actually uses those those special needles to cut this shape out, and it's pretty interesting the way that it does that. Um, we'll see. You'll see when when we actually sew the thing out. Um, uh, but the way it makes a curve is pretty neat. Uh, you wouldn't think it could do it with just like straight uh, lines. Um, that, that the cutting needles are, um, but it manages to do it pretty well. But anyway, well, we need to make another running stitch because in order for the cutter to cut properly, it has to have a, um, a stitch sewn right next to where it's going to cut that's going to hold all the, the layers of fabric together um, and, uh, and keep your stabilizer and your fabric real tight to one another. Um, otherwise, what happens is the edge gets real raw. Um, so the way that you get another running stitch in there is um, there's a tool called the auto border tool and we make sure that our thing is still selected which it is we can tell by the fact that we've got this um, purple rectangle uh, surrounding it um, and it's lit up so it's like highlighted in blue and everything um, and uh, we're gonna go to the toolbar on the left hand side uh, at near the very bottom there's a, a tool that looks kind of like a pencil drawing around a shape sort of if you squint if you hover your mouse over it it says auto border um, and you can also access this tool uh, by the the drop down menu if you right click on the object the, you get the option to do an auto border there as well um, so I want you for this uh, class to use this tool right here though um, and we're gonna left click on that tool once and the auto border dialog box comes up here I can choose whether I want um, the um, the, the, the border to be to the outside or to the inside. Um, if I do to the inside I, and I set a distance, it's going to be that distance away from the inside of my shape. If I do to the outside, it's going to be the distance that I set to the outside of the shape. And in this case, what we actually want to do is um, an order border to the outside, and we want it to be one millimeter. So put in distance one millimeter, and then the repeat needs to be one. Remove holes, doesn't matter. We're going to ignore that for this design. But if you were trying to trace um, like a, a more complicated shape uh, and you only wanted to do the outside part of it and not anything that's on the inside, you would tell it to remove holes. And then under type, we don't want it to be a satin serial. That would be this type of stitch that you see down here um, where it, it does like a satin like type zigzag type stitch. We don't want that. We want it to be a running stitch because um, all we need is for it to tack the, the fabric down and hold it in place. So we select running. Make sure the distance is at 1 to the outside, and choose OK. And now you can actually see, I'll zoom in on it, you can see that I've got another running stitch there, OK? So that's what we were looking to do, was, was create a second running stitch. Um, now the first running stitch, I know it's weird to think of the, the way that this works, but the first running stitch is the one that we're converting into a cut. The second running stitch that we created is going to actually sew out first, and that's going to tack the fabric down. Um, and make it so that the cut can be really um, nice and smooth and easy. If you don't do that, it will be a, a ragged looking cut. Um, so anytime you use your cutting needles, you want to always make sure you put down um, an auto border around the shape that you're cutting out. Um, and uh, it's kind of going to use the knife cut right up against that stitch. Um, and it's vitally important. If you don't do it, uh, you'll know right away because your, your cutting will be ragged. Um, Okay, but anyway, this is really all the digitizing that we have to do here. Um, we drew our shape in and converted the, the stitch to a run, made sure that we did our auto border. So at this point, we're ready to go into the editor program. This is the program called Wings, um, and it is what is going to let us turn this design into a cut work design. Um, and pay very close attention to how this works because it's not very intuitive at all. Um, and it's it's really easy to get confused, so don't hesitate to pause and rewatch a segment when I get to this next part. Okay, so to kick this over to the editor, we go to File, and then go to Export to Editor. And then the Wings program is going to open. Okay, and here is our design in the Wings editing program. The Wings has all kinds of crazy buttons everywhere. Uh, and we're going to ignore 99% of the options that are available in Wings because there's like a bajillion different things you can do. For this specific project, we're only going to worry about the sequence manager here. And we're going to click on some things out here in the design area. We're going to just ignore all these tools and all this other stuff. Just pretend like they don't exist. 
Um, so in the sequence manager, the very top thing that has a zero next to it, that is the entire design, okay? This is showing you everything that's in the design. Um, when, uh, so, so it can be kind of confusing, you know, you're looking at the sequence of how things sew out. Well, what's this thing at the top? It's everything. Uh, they don't really make that very clear. So the next thing in the order is um, the original design, which we're going to have to change the order of that. And then the next thing after that is the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the, oh, the shapes that we drew. And then the last thing is, I don't know why it adds this in, but what this is, is it's taking the needle up out of the fabric and doing a trim at the end of the design. Um, and in the wings program, it actually shows that as a separate step. So this is not actually anything. I know it's confusing, <laughs> but this is just where your machine brings the needle up out and cuts the thread. Um, so that can be confusing because it's got a picture of scissors, so you might think that this is the cutting part, but it's not. It's um, If it's got this little symbol of a needle going up and then the scissors cutting a thread, that means it's a trim. Um, so we can just ignore that one. What we need is um, to be able to uh, convert one of our running stitches into the cut, but what it did is, if we look over here in the design page area, both of our running stitches have been combined into one part of the design. And that's not going to work for us because we need to have only one part of it be a cut work design. So what you have to do is actually break this apart into two separate segments. Um, and it's easily done, it's just you have to know that you have to do it. Uh, what you do is you go and right click on it and it has to be right clicked in the design area here it can't be right clicked in the sequence manager so we're going to go into the design area we're going to right click anywhere on these lines and we're going to choose break apart so i'm going to left click on break apart okay and now it has it doesn't look like it did anything but now look we've got this little plus sign in our sequence that we didn't have before and instead of just saying number two it says number two and number three so if I click on my plus sign, I have these two segments separate. I've got this one is my outer segment, this one is my inner segment. And I can tell by looking at the area that is highlighted when I click on each one. See how this one, the area is slightly larger, this one's slightly smaller. That way I can tell this is the inner one. And it's the inner one that we want to turn into the cut work. So how do we do that? Um, you select it, which we have done right now. You right click on it and choose change to veneer. I don't know why they call it that. I don't know why they don't word it like turn to a cut work design or something like that that would make um, make it easy on you. But that's what you do. Change to veneer. Um, and uh, if yours, in the older version, for some reason it said veneer cut. So if you haven't updated, then it'll actually be a little bit easier. It'll actually say veneer cut. So we're going to do change to veneer. And that's it. So um, a confusing thing that happens is it doesn't indicate to you in any way that it has done anything um, at this point. But as long as you did right click and choose veneer cut, then it did in fact turn it into a cut. Um, and the last step that we need to do is change the order so that this part, the actual embroidery, that the original embroidery sews out last. Um, so we're gonna click and drag that and we're actually going to put it right in front of our last step here, which was the cut. So it's you're going to see just what you see here if you've done it right. Okay. Now, now we have to save this design, and um, the way you do that is you go up to File, choose Save As. Uh, you're going to want to name it something. Um, name it Cut, maybe. I already have one because I. I Kind of practiced before I made this video, so I'm gonna save, resave it as cut.pes. Hit save. Um, mine says that it already exists because I already had one called that. I'm just gonna say yes. Uh, and then here you use the the default settings. Just click OK, and it will make the design uh, like that. And so just to show you what it's done here, I'm gonna open this in another program um, that kind of gives a better preview of what the design will look like. And uh, I'm actually going to cut this design out in class for you guys. So here, let me open the design. And what we have here is 
it's going to do the first it's going to do the single running stitch. so if you look at my sequence view here we see the first it's the running stitch that's my tack down stitch and then each one of these colors red ultramarine black and green deep green those correspond to the colors of your cutting blades that came with your software um, so you use the the color cutter that corresponds to the color on the uh, the embroidery machine screen so the embroidery machine will tell me to use red and I just have to know because I made the design uh, that it doesn't mean to put red thread in there it means to take the red cutting needle put it in the machine and hit start it'll go ahead and cut it and then it'll stop tell me to use the next color which is the ultramarine which it means blue uh, and it'll cut that angle and then it'll do the black and then it'll do the gray and my design will be nice and cut out and then this cool design is going to sew out right on top of it and uh, and it'll be really pretty and fun so uh, so that's how you do it I'll, I'm gonna do the sewing out part in class so you guys can actually see the steps um, involved for that but basically that's it that's how we would convert uh, an open area inside an embroidery design to a cut file um, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to do it at home and okay so I'll see you in the next video um, Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.